in the interest of full disclosure, I know Renee DeResta, not well, but uh, I've broken bread with her. Um, it's not surprising to me at all that she has a CIA background. But am I mistaken in recalling a, in fact, very recent podcast in which you and Renee and Barry Weiss yeah. and Sam Harris gathered? <sighs> so first of all, tell us, tell us about that. This is not a caught red-handed thing. I'm not saying gotcha. I'm just saying interesting that you would be talking about Renee DiResta as a um, as the most fascinating, boring person in history no, no. by virtue. Oh, no, I don't think she's boring no. at all. Right, right. That's no, no, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I think superficially boring. No, no, I think she's I think she's dangerous and needs to be disempowered and has been disempowered by our research and our writing. Um, I think yep. she's the I mean, I'm not saying there's not somebody else behind her, but I actually whether or not there is. And, and I think it might be Michael McFall or at least she's someone she, that he, she works closely with. And he's ostensibly her boss at Stanford. Um, I think she's the one that's done the most important intellectual work to make the case for censorship and to do censorship and to actually actively censor people like you. Um so, right. um, I mean, I've written a lot about it. People should read, uh, most importantly, just called Why Renee DiResta Leads the Censorship Industry. That's the the big piece that we did on her. But also she's in both of my congressional testimonies um, and also discussed her on Joe Rogan. But um, she's a, va- a fascinating person. Um, I uh, On the podcast with Sam, I did not yet understand what how important she was. I knew she was important, but I didn't know. I didn't know that what she had done with the election integrity project and the virality project, which were the two main censorship programs in 2020 and 2021, nor did I understand. Is it, her, fair, her, is it fair to say, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but is it fair to say you did not know? It's not just that the extent of her importance that you didn't know, but you didn't know in what way she was important. Nor did I know that, that she fair? was overseeing the censorship program, nor had she talked about it um, or had made much hay of it. Um, um, certainly not on the podcast. She's very, very disciplined and careful with how she talks in every situation. Um, having now watched many hours of Renee DeResta in various contexts, and she's always She's, um, you know, she's interesting. She always is sort of the number two person, but yet she's always obviously smarter than the number one guy. Um, You know, she has this whole, I think, completely contrived and ridiculous um, background story that she was just an anti, that she was just a a pro-vaccine mom. Um, That's all. And she just started uh, being concerned about disinfo on Facebook. I don't believe any of it. Um, she then suddenly found herself advising Obama on fighting ISIS, which is just this bizarre. I mean, when you understand how hierarchical military intelligence cultures are to kind of imagine some hobbyist pro vaccine mom from the Bay Area suddenly advising Obama on fighting ISIS, it's just absurd. Um, yep. So um, she's a fascinating person. Um, you know, I, I don't want to spend, I, I try not to overemphasize it because for two reasons. One, I, I don't want to personalize it because it isn't a personal issue. Actually, um, I, I think it's when I yeah. share some common views of COVID and homelessness, for example. Um, you know, I think she's higher in, in a personality description. She'd be higher on orderliness and industriousness. I bet she's pretty high on conscientiousness. Um, I think that's the type of person that has not cared for the open drug scenes and open drug dealing, nor do I think she's a clim- nor do I think she was a climate alarmist. I think actually she was probably really opposed to the stay at home orders for kids. So I want to remain human about this. Um, I, I suspect, like I've always said, I'm sure she's, like in her private life, she might be a perfectly good person, but the work she did censoring ordinary Americans is absolutely unethical, violates the constitution. She needs to be held to account for it. She is being uh, sued right now. Um, she did bad things so wait, wait, I, and she abused power and there's, and she's been secretive and there's a lot more going on than she's been honest about. So um, I don't want to personalize this, but I do think the example of Renee DiResta is so significant that we need to spend a little time here and it doesn't have to be personal at all. In fact, I would say, look, Renee, if you're watching, come clean right? What you did was unpatriotic. The route back is to tell us about it. How did it happen? 
How did you find yourself doing this work that any rational person would understand as a violation of our most important constitutional right? And as somebody who was a victim of that, I will welcome you with open arms if you'll come clean about the whole thing so that we as citizens can understand what it is and we can fix our structure. So this isn't personal. But I do want to point out, am I correct? Rene DiResta has been a guest on Joe Rogan's program. Yes. Yes. Guest on Joe Rogan's program. I ran into her at a conference of, let's just say, uh, intellectually minded people who had gathered to talk about the important issues of the day. A conference that was put together just for people to gather and discuss important things. Okay. Um, you find yourself on a podcast with Renee DiResta and Sam Harris. Sam Harris, who has played his own role. Now, Sam Harris is not a government entity. He is not obligated to be truthful or decent or analytically consistent or anything. So I'm not suggesting that Sam has uh, violated any uh, principle other than common decency in what he did. But the fact that you, who are now one of the most important nodes in the dissident network fighting this cryptic suppression of speech, found yourself podcasting effectively on a team with Sam Harris, Rene DiResta, and Barry Weiss is fascinating. And my point is not really about Rene DiResta. It's about whatever it is that Rene DiResta is doing. The phony story that you point to couldn't possibly be right, where as a, you know, pro-vaccine mom, she finds herself uh, advising the Pentagon. Well, that same uh, unbelievableness accompanies her movement through the sphere of people trying to make sense of the world. And how much does it have to do with, for example, Sam Harris's profound confusion of late, right? I will point out to you that Rene DiResta is central to the story of both uh, the suppression of actual information and analysis on COVID, but also the Biden laptop story yes. during the election, right? So, and and Sam had uh, Renee on as a guest uh, on the now thoroughly debunked um, yeah. Russian collusion story. So, I'll so I guess my point Sam. is, it is not surprising. I said I'm happy say to say again? something about Sam. What? Well, I would love for you to. Um, as you probably know, my relationship with Sam has become very complicated, and I hold Sam responsible for that. But Sam is also somebody I would welcome back with open arms yeah. if he would come clean about what happened. 